Atrial flutter is a classic atrial tachyrrhythmia, and once you truly understand it, you'll start recognizing it on ECG almost instantly. But to really master atrial flutter, we need to understand why it happens, what it looks like, and how it behaves differently from other arrhythmias, especially atrial fibrillation. So let's take this step by step. Atrial flutter is a rapid atrial rhythm that is usually caused by a re-entry circuit within the atria. Now pause for a moment. This idea of re-entry is extremely important. In a normal heart rhythm, electrical impulses begin in the SA node, travel smoothly across the atria, pause briefly at the AV node, and then move down to the ventricles in an organized one-way fashion. But in atrial flutter, something goes wrong. Instead of moving forward and stopping, the electrical impulse gets trapped in a circular pathway. It loops over and over again, continuously activating the atria. Think of it like a car stuck on a racetrack. There's no exit, just endless laps. Because of this looping circuit, the atria depolarize very rapidly and very regularly, usually at a rate of about 300 beats per minute. That number, 300 beats per minute, is not random. It's one of the biggest clues you'll ever get on an ECG. In normal sinus rhythm, you're used to seeing a clean ECG strip, a P wave, a flat isoelectric baseline, AQRS complex, then another flat baseline. But atrial flutter completely destroys that pattern because the atria are depolarizing continuously. There is no time for the baseline to return to normal. So what happens? The isoelectric baseline disappears. Instead of a flat line, you see constant atrial activity filling the space between QRS complexes. This is where atrial flutter gets its famous appearance. On the ECG, atrial flutter produces flutter waves, often described as water waves, flutter waves, or most commonly, a sawtooth pattern. These waves are repetitive, uniform, and evenly spaced. Each tooth of that sawtooth represents one atrial depolarization. And here's a critical teaching point. These flutter waves occur at mostly regular intervals. This tells you something very important. Unlike atrial fibrillation, where atrial activity is chaotic and disorganized, atrial flutter is fast, but organized. That single concept alone helps you differentiate these two rhythms instantly. Let's slow down here because this comparison matters. In atrial fibrillation, atrial activity is random. There are no consistent waves. The rhythm is irregularly irregular. The RR intervals are always different. But in atrial flutter, atrial activity is repetitive. Flutter waves look nearly identical. And most importantly, the ventricular rhythm is often regular. That regularity is your biggest clue. Now, let's talk about the AV node, because it plays a huge role in what you actually see on the ECG. Remember, the atria may be firing at 300 beats per minute, but the ventricles cannot and should not follow that rate. The AV node acts like a filter. It blocks some impulses and allows others through in a predictable pattern. This creates what we call AV block ratios, commonly referred to as fixed blocks. You will most commonly see 2 to 1 block, 3 to 1 block, or 4 to 1 block. This ratio describes how many flutter waves occur before a QRS complex appears. Let's visualize this. Four flutter waves occur. Then one impulse makes it through the AV node, producing a single QRS complex. So we call this atrial flutter with a four to one block. Three flutter waves for every QRS complex. Again, regular, predictable, organized. So we call this atrial flutter with a three to one block. In two colon one block, every second flutter wave conducts. This often results in a faster ventricular rate and can sometimes be confusing for beginners. Now let's talk about why RR intervals are regular. Because the AV node blocks impulses in a fixed pattern, the ventricular response becomes predictable. That's why in atrial flutter, the RR intervals are often identical. The rhythm appears regular or nearly regular. Unless the block becomes variable, which can happen, you should expect consistent spacing between QRS complexes. Finally, let's talk about QRS complexes. In most cases, QRS complexes are narrow, less than 120 milliseconds. Why? 
because ventricular conduction is still occurring through the normal Hisperkinji system. Of course, if there's a bundle branch block or aberrant conduction, QRS complexes may appear wide, but that's not specific to atrial flutter. So how do you recognize atrial flutter on an ECG? Think of it as a checklist. One, the atrial rate is typically around 300 beats per minute. Two, you will not see P waves. Instead, you'll see flutter waves, creating a sawtooth pattern. Three, the RR intervals are usually identical due to fixed AV block. Four, QRS complexes are narrow, unless there's a bundle branch block or aberrancy. If you find all these features on an ECG, you're almost certainly looking at atrial flutter. And once your eye gets trained to spot that sawtooth pattern, atrial flutter becomes one of the most recognizable rhythms in cardiology. If you found this explanation helpful, make sure to like the video and leave a comment below. We read your feedback closely, and it directly influences future content. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.